Introduction to create a data-driven story with Power BI reports. Organizations use reports to monitor and record performance and identify trends and variances. When an organization is making decisions, it relies on the information that is provided by reports. Reports drive organizational behavior and action at every level in every aspect. After you've added visuals to your report, you can make further improvements and modify the report before finally sharing it with the report audience. In this module, you'll apply the available functions in the report editor in Power BI Desktop to your visuals, which will transform your report into a data-driven story. You'll provide users with a more effective report layout and navigation experience and give them additional tools so they can further explore the information that you present in your visuals. Then, you'll publish the report so users can access the information that they need to make decisions. This module is instructional until you reach the interactive lab. In this module scenario, you work as a Power BI developer for Tailwind Traders. Your managers have found it difficult to make good business decisions based on the current quality of the reports. Consequently, your managers have requested one report that displays all the information that they need to accomplish their yearly planning and forecasting activities, ultimately helping them make better, strategic organizational decisions. They want the report to be concise, accurate, and well-designed and it must display information in a compelling way that is simple to navigate and complies with current accessibility standards. You have already begun adding and customizing visuals on the report. Now, you need to take the report to the next level to meet management's requirements. By the end of this module, you will be able to design a report layout, add buttons, bookmarks, and selections. Design report navigation. Use basic interactions. Use advanced interactions and drill through. Configure conditional formatting. Apply slicing, filtering, and sorting. Publish and export reports. Comment on reports. Use Performance Analyzer to tune reports. Optimize reports for mobile use. Design a report layout. The page layout of the reports that you create in Power BI Desktop will likely depend on the business requirements, the context of the underlying data, and the output requirements. For example, if you are designing a dashboard, you'll need to present high-level information on a single page. If you are designing a report, it is a multi-perspective view into your dataset, with visuals that represent different findings and insights from that dataset. Report Design Best Practice The first step in designing an exceptional report layout is to choose the correct format. Likely, your manager or whoever requested the report, will give you some requirements in terms of format. If not, you'll need to consider the audience and speculate about the kind of format that they'll want. For example, if your report users have a technical background and are looking for specific facts, you can use multiple, complex visuals that offer the most detail, along with interactive slicers. Conversely, if your users are looking for quick data insights at a high level, you could use a small range of basic visuals. If you have been given some layout requirements, you still need to carefully consider the report audience. Your goal is to provide the audience with the information that they need in an optimal way. While you might have a strong opinion about what data to display and how to display it, ultimately, the report is not for you, it is for a dedicated audience that needs to make business decisions based on your report. 
Considering the different needs of the report audience is crucial. Your report audience might have hearing, motor, cognitive, or visual impairment. To accommodate those needs, you should create a report that offers an accessible experience, which means that the report will be simple to navigate and understand by keyboard or screen reader users. You'll learn more about design and configuring your report for accessibility in subsequent sections. Carefully consider each visual and element that you plan on using in the report. Everything should have a purpose, and you should consider how each element will appear to your report users. While you might consider using different types of visuals for the sake of variety or to demonstrate your skill set, Sometimes a simple visual is all that you need. Likely, your organization will have style guidelines for reports, in which case, you'll have to adhere to particular color scheme and font. Do keep in mind that the more visuals you use in your report, the more that they impact the performance of your report. Other key guidelines for creating a well-designed report layout include Draw a sketch of your report layout. This approach will help you get an idea of what it will look like before you spend considerable time physically designing it. Alternatively, you could draw multiple sketches, where you try out different ideas and then discuss these ideas with your team to help select the best layout design. Focus on the most important information. Highlight key parts of your report with a bright color or summary icon so that it stands out and draws users to the most critical metrics. Select the right background for the context of your report. A white background can make your report look clean and professional, whereas a black background can draw attention to colorful highlights on the report. Using images as a background can add visual interest. The following image shows a poorly designed report layout, which you should avoid. A later section will provide an example of the same report but with an improved design. The following sections provide more detailed guidance for setting up the report page and using visuals. Report page It is important to consider that you and the report users might view the reports on screens with different aspect ratios and sizes. The default display view is fit to page, which means that the contents are scaled to best fit the page. If you need to change this view, go to the View tab, select Page View, and then select your preferred page view option, as illustrated in the following screenshot. To access the page settings, select the white space on your report canvas to open the format pane. You can then configure the following settings to suit your needs, page information, page alignment, page size, wallpaper, page background, and filter pane. Visuals You might want to use a combination of visuals in your report, such as cards, charts, tables, slicers, and so on. It is important to use the right number of visuals on a page and then size and position those visuals strategically. Number of visuals. Consider the number of visuals, including slicers, that you want to use on each report page. Using more visuals might have the opposite effect to what you are trying to achieve. More visuals might make your report look too busy causing users to feel overwhelmed because they don't know where to focus their attention. Also, visuals are key factors in the performance of your report. They contribute to performance issues. The fewer visuals you use, the better the performance will be. It's best to limit the number of visuals that you use on a page. Examine each visual and ask yourself if it's necessary. If a visual does not add value to the audience, you should not use it in your report. Rather than using multiple visuals, you can provide information in other ways, such as drill through pages and report page tooltips. Position of visuals 
When you add visualizations to a report, you can move those visuals to specific locations on the page and make them larger or smaller for a more effective display. It is best practice to place the most important visual in the upper left corner of your report because your users most likely read left to right and top to bottom. You might also want to place your organization's logo in or near this area. You can then arrange the other visuals accordingly. To move a visualization, select any area of the visualization and then drag it to the new location. To evenly distribute distance between visuals that are located on the canvas, you can also use the align function. Use Ctrl plus click to select all visuals that you want to align, select the format tab, and then select distribute horizontally. The visuals will then be evenly distributed. Size of visuals. When you add a visual to a report, Power BI determines the size of that visual by default. You can resize the visual to ensure that it presents the displayed information most optimally. For example, if the visual is of a small car, you might want to make the visual smaller. Similarly, if you are working with a scatter chart visual with extensive data, you might want to make that visual larger in size so users can see the data clearly. To resize a visual, select the visual to display its border, and then select and drag the dark frame handles to the size that you want it to be. Interaction of visuals The visuals that you add to your report will interact with each other. For example, when you select an element in one visual, such as a product category, the other visuals will update in relation to that element, they might highlight or filter the specific data that they display. Therefore, when you are designing the report, it is important to understand these interactions and consider how they might affect the overall user experience of the report. You have control over how interactions flow between the visuals, therefore, you might want to change a filter action to a highlight, and contrarywise, or prevent an interaction from happening. Hierarchies in visuals Likely, you'll have a number of hierarchies in your data, so you should consider how these hierarchies will affect how the data displays in the visuals and the navigation experience of your report users. You can set how hierarchies are presented in the visuals. You can also determine the hierarchical path of visuals so that you have full control over what level of detail can be accessed. Report Accessibility It is essential that you consider the possibility that your users might have hearing, motor, cognitive, or visual impairments. Therefore, make sure that you design a report that adheres to accessibility standards and that uses the available accessibility features within Power BI Desktop. Designing a report that offers an accessible experience will benefit all report users because it ensures that your report has an effective design and uses consistent formatting and color scheme or theme. Generally, when you are using Power BI with a screen reader, we recommend that you turn scan mode or browse mode off. To improve the process of creating reports with screen readers, a context menu is available. The menu allows you to move fields in the well up or down in the fields list. The menu also allows you to move fields to other wells such as legend, value, small multiples, and tooltips. Accessibility Standards Power BI is committed to accessibility standards under the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, WCAG. The standards help ensure that your Power BI experiences are accessible to as many people as possible. When you build accessible reports or dashboards, that content is accessible for anyone who views them by using Power BI Mobile. Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, WCAG, help make web content accessible to people with disabilities. The key principles of the guidelines are experiences are accessible to as many people as possible. When you build accessible reports or dashboards, that content is accessible for anyone who views them by using Power BI Mobile. 
Perceivable information and user interface components must be presentable to users in ways that they can perceive. Operable user interface components and navigation must be operable. Understandable information and the operation of the user interface must be understandable. Accessibility features. The following accessibility features are built into Powered BI Desktop, so you don't need to do any configuration in this regard. Keyboard navigation. Screen reader compatibility. High contrast colors view. Focus mode. Show data table. Accessibility features that you do need to configure include Alt text Tab order Titles and labels Markers Themes Alt text To accommodate report consumers who use screen readers, you can use alternative Alt text to describe the appearance and function of objects, such as a visual, shape, and so on, on the report page. Alt text helps you ensure that users understand what you are trying to communicate with those objects, even if they are unable to see them. To add alt text to an object, select that object and, in the visualizations pane, open the format pane. Expand the general section, scroll to the bottom of the options, and then enter a description in the alt text box. Repeat this step for every object that conveys meaningful information on a report. If you do not want to use static text, you can use data analysis expressions, DAX, measures and conditional formatting to create dynamic alt text. Screen readers will then call out values that are specific to the data that a report user is viewing. To apply conditional formatting, right-click the alt text box, select conditional formatting, and then configure the settings as required. Tab order. To help keyboard users navigate your report in an order that matches the way that visual users would, you can set the tab order. To set the tab order, select the view tab in the ribbon and then select selection pane. On the selection pane that displays, use the arrow buttons to move the objects to the correct order, or select an object with your mouse and drag it into the position that you want in the list. To hide an object from the tab order, select the number next to that object. For example, it's best to hide decorative shapes and images that you have in your report. Titles and Labels To help all users, you should provide clear, concise, descriptive titles for your visuals and report pages. Avoid using acronyms or jargon that new users or users who are external to your organization will not understand. Compare the following images, where the image on the left shows a visual with an acronym in the title, and the image on the right shows a visual with a clearer title. Make sure that all labels within a visual are easy to read and understand. You can turn on or off the labels for each series in your visual or position them above or below a series to make them clearer. Don't turn on labels for every visual because it might have the opposite effect by distracting users and making your report less accessible. Compare the following images, where the first image has fewer numbers or descriptions of the data, whereas the second has several. Markers it's best practice to avoid using color, including the feature's conditional formatting, as the only way of conveying information. Instead, you can use markers to convey different series. For line, area, and combo visuals, including scatter and bubble visuals, you can turn on markers and use a different shape for each line. Keep in mind that, if you turn on markers for every visual, it might be distracting and make your report less accessible for users. To turn on markers in the format pane, expand the shapes section and then scroll down and move the show marker slider to the on position. Themes. To make your reports even more accessible, ensure that enough contrast exists between the text and background colors, 
the contrast ratio should be at least 4.5 to 1. Several tools are available for you to use to check your report colors, such as Color Contrast Analyzer, WebAIM, and Accessible Colors. Some of your report viewers might have color vision deficiencies. Using fewer colors or a monochrome palette in your report can help mitigate the creation of inaccessible reports. The following color combinations are difficult for users with color vision deficiencies to distinguish, so you should avoid using them together in a chart or on the same report page. Green and red. Green and brown. Blue and purple. Green and blue. Light green and yellow. Blue and gray. Green and gray. Green and Black Power BI Desktop has built-in themes that you can use to make your report more accessible and generally look better. You can access these themes from the View tab. Select the Expand button to view all available themes and related options. Select any theme and it will automatically apply across the whole report. All visuals will use the colors and formatting from your selected theme as their defaults. You can also import or create your custom themes by expanding the following themes options. The following image depicts the same report that was shown at the beginning of this unit. However, in this image, the report has a better design, it has a planned layout and consistent color scheme and formatting. Add buttons, bookmarks, and selections. You can use the bookmarks, buttons, and selections features in Power BI Desktop to make your report more compelling, interactive, and simpler for users to navigate. Bookmarks capture the currently configured view of a report page so you can quickly return to that view later. You can use bookmarks for different reasons. For example, you can use them to keep track of your own progress when creating reports. You can also use them to build a PowerPoint-like presentation that goes through the bookmarks in order, thereby telling a story with your report. Buttons create a more interactive experience for the report users. With the addition of buttons that have assigned actions, your report behaves similar to an app, where users can hover, select, and interact more with the content. Selections allow you to determine what items in the report are visible and what items are hidden. Selections are used alongside bookmarks and buttons. Consider a situation where you have designed a report page and want to have a second page that looks almost the same, except that one of the visuals will be different. Rather than creating a second page and manually making changes, you can use a combination of selections, bookmarks, and buttons to switch between the two visuals on one page. Add bookmarks. When you add a bookmark, the following elements are saved with it. Current page. Filters. Slicers, including slicer type, for example, drop-down or list, and slicer state. Visual selection state, such as cross-highlight filters, Sort order. Drill location. Visibility of an object by using the selection pane. Focus or spotlight modes of any visible object. In this example, you want to add bookmarks to allow users to switch between two visuals on one page. First, you need to set up how you want the page to initially display. When you have added and formatted all the visuals and other items on the page, you can add a bookmark to capture a snapshot of the page in its current state. Before adding a bookmark, go to the View tab in the ribbon and select Selection. The displayed selection pane includes a list of all items on your page, along with an eye icon that indicates the items that are currently visible. You can rename the items in the list by double-clicking them so you clearly know which one is which. Now you are ready to add the bookmark. On the View tab, select Bookmarks. On the Bookmarks panel that displays, select Add. 
It's good practice to rename the new bookmark so its purpose is clear. This notion is especially true if you plan on adding multiple bookmarks. To rename a bookmark, double-click the bookmark and enter the new name. In this example, you want to change the bookmark name from bookmark 1 to variance chart because the variance chart is the main focus of the page, as shown in the following image. In the selection pane, the variance chart displays and the other visuals are hidden. Next, you can add the second bookmark. Start by making changes to how the page currently appears. In this example, you will add another bookmark for the main dashboard charts. Because you only want to see charts from the main dashboard, you can hide the variance chart by selecting its eye icon on the selections pane. Then, add a bookmark for this new view of the page and rename it as main dashboard. Now, you can switch between the two bookmarks to see the difference in the page. Repeat these steps to add more bookmarks. In summary, you would select items that you want to show hide on the report page, add a bookmark, and then give it a descriptive name. You can now assign those bookmarks to buttons so that users can switch between the bookmarks. Add buttons. You can use buttons for many reasons, such as to switch between two visuals in a report, as required in the previous example, to drill down into the data in a visual, or to move from one page in your report to another. Power BI Desktop provides a range of button types that you can add to your report, as illustrated in the following image. In this example, you want to add customized buttons that are used to switch between two bookmarks. To add a button, go to the Insert tab on the ribbon and select Buttons. Then, select the type of button that you want to add from the list, which in this case, you would select the blank option. When the button is added to the page, reposition the button to above the visual on the right side. Next, select the button and then, in the Visualizations pane, move the button text slider to the on position. Expand the button text section and then enter the text that you want to display on the button, for example, main dashboard. You can then format the button text by changing its font, color, alignment, and text size. Expand the background section and select a suitable color for the button. Now, you can add an action to the button. Go to the action slider near the bottom of the visualizations pane and move the slider to the on position. Then, expand the action section to view the options. The options for the button action types are as follows, some of which are explained in more detail in the subsequent sections. Back returns the user to the previous page of the report. This option is useful for drill-through pages or pages that are accessed from one main page. Bookmark presents the report page that's associated with a bookmark that is defined for the current report. Drill-through brings the user to a drill-through page that is filtered to their selection without using bookmarks. Page navigation brings the user to a different page within the report, also without using bookmarks, which is an effective way to create a navigation experience for your report users. This type of button is discussed later in this module. Q&A opens a Q&A Explorer window, where users can enter questions to quickly find the information that they are looking for and specify the type of visual that they want to see the information displayed in. This option can be useful if you want to save space in the report but still offer Q&A functionality to the user. Web URL opens a website in a new browser window. For example, you might want to give users quick access to your organization's website or intranet from within a report. In this example, you select bookmark as the action type. In the bookmark list that displays, select the bookmark that you want to assign to the action, the main dashboard bookmark that you created previously. For enhanced accessibility, you should add a tooltip that users will see when they hover over the button, but in this case, it's not required because you have a descriptive button label. 
Now that your button is set up, you can copy and paste the button so that you have two buttons with consistent formatting on the page. In this example, you rename the second button to Variance Chart and change the assign action to the Variance Chart bookmark. You can then reposition the buttons anywhere on your canvas. For this example, you will position the new buttons on the left side of the canvas for easy navigation. Your buttons are now ready for use. You can use them to switch between two bookmarks with a different layout on the same page. When you select the main dashboard button, the main dashboard charts display, and when you select the variance chart button, the variance chart displays.